Hey everybody, Kyle here over at ClassRiverDespairs.com and today I'm really excited to bring you a new video today. Today we're going to be talking about Electrix World electronic ignition for vintage Triumph, BSA, and Norton motorcycles. Now for most of you that follow me on YouTube and my social media accounts, you probably noticed that it's been a very long time since I posted. So I just want to let you guys know that I'm very sorry, but I am happy and excited because I am back again to show you this great electronic ignition kit. Now I'm not going to be showing you how to install it, but I'm going to show you some tips and tricks that are extremely important prior to the install that the instruction manuals simply aren't going to get into. So I highly recommend that you watch this video. Again, I'm really excited and let's get right to it. Alright you guys, so we have the Electric World kit in front of us. This one is the alternator kit that has the lighting coils on the actual stator itself. There's a couple different ones that Electric World uh, offers and also that we offer on our website. We have some that are for racing applications, we have some that are for road applications like this one that's seen that has the lighting coils itself. So if you have a Vintage Tron, BSA or Norton, um, whether it's for motocross, scrambles, flat track, road racing or just basic road use, um, we definitely have a kit to work with your needs. Now the Electric World is an extremely, extremely accurate kit and it's very simple and literally, and there's more parts that isn't shown here that's in this box and it like literally, it all comes in this box. You don't need anything else. It comes with the regulator, a coil, the stator, the rotor, everything you need, literally, it's all in this one box and it's a very, very affordable price. Um, so again, we have the basic parts here. I'm not gonna show you how to install them on your bike. I, I would refer you to the instruction because it's very simple. It's not very difficult to do, but I'm gonna uh, show you things right now that's not in the instruction manual that you might run into. So let's start um, working our way into that. So first, let's go over the basic parts. This is the rotor itself, or also known as the flywheel. You can see the magnetic strip on the inside. We have the stator itself, the stator and the stator plate. You can see it has three lighting coils, very simple, and light. This is the collet. We have two spacers, steel spacers, and we also have three aluminum spacers for the spacing of the stator and um, for the lock nuts itself on the three stator sets. So these are the parts that we're going to be focusing on right now. So let's start putting it on this engine here and we'll start getting into detail. Now I assume that you're in the position of installing this kit on your engine and you have the instructions so you basically know what's going on. So right now, if you're going to install this on your engine, you have to take your spacer. Now there's two spacers that come with the kit. I have seen some kits only have one and I've seen some kits that have two. Some of them are different thicknesses. I've seen some that are 0.200 thousandths and I've seen some that are 0.250 which would be a quarter an inch. Uh, regardless of that, you're going to take your spacer, either, either a thin or a thick one, because we'll figure out down the road which one you might need. You're going to take your spacer and you're going to slip it on the end of the sh of your, this is the crankshaft, the end of the crankshaft here. Then you're going to take your collet. This is a tapered collet and it's going to slide on the end of the crank. Make sure that the taper facing upwards goes to the back side of this spacer here. Very important or else your rotor is not going to fit. Next, what I do after these parts are installed is I take my stator. I like to make sure the wires are up, not down. Take your stator and put it on your three alternator sets. The way that I'm installing this right now is the same on singles and twins. Sometimes you got to wiggle it on there. What I like to do is make sure you set the stator plate in the center. So you have full throw this way and full throw this way. If you're familiar with points, you know exactly why that is and what I'm referring to. So now that this is installed, you're going to take your rotor. So let me grab my rotor. Here is the rotor. You're going to take your rotor here and slide it over. Obviously it's not tightened down, it's not torqued, so you saw the magnets pull it. But for uh, demonstration purposes, I'm going to show you where things usually go wrong and it's at this point here. The spacer on the end of the crankshaft is there to space the rotor. The thicker the spacer, the more it pushes out the tapered collet, which means that this rotor is going to be pushed further away. If you have a thinner spacer, that means the rotor is going to come closer into contact with this plate. Now everything sounds pretty simple. It's literally just as simple as putting this on, timing it, and you're good to go. However, this is often, oftentimes 
overlooked. So this spacer itself, when you install this and you install this taper collet, what I like to do, tighten this down first prior and put your rotor on. Once you put your rotor on, take your lock nut and tighten it down. You don't have to torque it to you know, 35, 40 pounds, whatever the book says. Since it's tapered, you should be able to tighten it a bit, maybe about 15 pounds, or tap it on with a mallet. This is tapered again, so it's gonna lock into place. You wanna be able to turn the engine over nice and smooth. If you get any resistance, anything that's tight, chances are that the outside of this rotor is interfering with the boss on the stator plate. And the reason why there's a boss there that is raised is so that this does not come in too close and make contact with the wires. So it's very important. The only way to figure that out is use the thinnest spacer, put your rotor on, tap it in place, you can torque it down and turn the engine over. If your crankshaft has any run out, if it's bent, things of that sort, and you know, I'm talking a few thousands more than what the book states, uh, then yes, that could cause problems. So again, check your spacer, make sure that your rotor here is not interfering with the stator plate. If it is, you will quickly find when you turn the engine over when you're timing it. All of a sudden it feels very tight. So if for some reason you have the thinner spacer installed, then you can install a thicker spacer. Now when you start changing the distance of this rotor, not only do you really fix the problem, but you're also possibly opening up another problem. If you widen or push the rotor out further, it could interfere with your primary cover. I'm not going to get into detail of that because those are very, very rare circumstances. If you have the correct spacers, typically it will solve your problem. Uh, some circumstances require thinner spacers and some actually require thicker spacers. But these are things to look out for when you're installing uh, the Electrix World rotor itself. When you have the stator installed on the studs, it's very important that this wire does not interfere with the primary chain. It's really important because uh, the, the chain itself will literally shred this wire very quickly. So it's very important that this wire stays away, which is why I prefer to keep the wire up top, not necessarily at the bottom or at the front. So in this circumstance here, um, you have the tunnel here for your uh, wires, the lead wires. It would be a nice gradual smooth exiting point and the chain would be just above it so you wouldn't have any problems here. So take a look at that. Also make sure that your stator is not going to interfere with the sprocket and there's enough clearance back here. If for some reason it's too close or it is interfering, then you would have to space the stator to get it further away from the primary chain itself. All right, you guys, let's go ahead and talk about the timing. The instruction manual is very detailed on it but it doesn't really go into really uh, great depth of how to time it. Now, don't get me wrong, it's really easy to time and um, it's not very difficult to do. So what I typically like to do first is top dead center. That's number one when you're timing it. You have to find true top dead center. So you could use an indicator um, off the, the dome of the piston or you can put a degree wheel with a pointer and find true top dead center. So it's completely up to you of how you wanna do that. But that is number one, top dead center. So typically when you're timing a Triumph, especially like either cam timing or ignition timing if you're working with points, you find top dead center and then you rock it back to 38 degrees before top dead center, let's say for a Triumph. That's pretty much how you do it and then you can find when the points open and when they're closing. On this ignition kit, it's a lot easier than that because they've done all the work um, when they machine the rotor and the stator itself. So what you wanna do is top dead center so if you own a Triumph, let's say it's 38 degrees before top dead center. Some different models have 34, things of that sort. So we'll stick to 38. It's clearly marked here 38 degrees before top dead center. So with your crankshaft and your pistons at top dead center, there is a stator, there's a mark here on the stator. I moved it out the way so you can see it. Sometimes they're in different locations, but it's been, there's a punch mark and a red dot. So what you wanna do, if it's 38 degrees before top dead center, you're literally gonna slip this on at the end of the crankshaft and make sure the red dot lines up with the 38 degrees and then you torque it in place and then lock everything down. That is 38 degrees before top dead center. But you might ask, well, why don't you back it up to 38 degrees before top dead center? Doesn't it fire or trigger at that mark? 
And the answer is no. Me thinking and working with points, yes, you would go to 38 degrees, line it up with the trigger where it's gonna fire and that's time. But this is actually easier than that. Top dead center, your 38 degrees line up with the red mark. But it does not fire at this mark. It actually fires at this mark for FA. This is where it's gonna fire. So theoretically, if we mock this up here, top dead center, 38 degrees. So that's, we know it's at 38 degrees. At this position, it's at 38 degrees. When we back it up and that red mark is lined up with the FA, that is true 38 degrees. But they've made it in such a way as just put it at top dead center, line the 38 or whatever degree you want with the red dot and we'll handle the rest. And if you wanna double check your work, you can either put a strobe light on it or you rock your crankshaft back to 38 degrees, let's say, with the degree will or without, and it should, the FA, this mark here, should line up with the red. It's extremely, extremely simple. However, depending on how you read the instructions, it does seem like top dead center, rock the crank back to 38, line it with the 38, and then you're good. But actually, it's a lot easier than that. Remember, top dead center, find the red mark, find what degree you want, line it up, put it on the end of the crank and torque it down. And then if you were to rock it back and check, it's gonna fire at that mark. It's really and very simple, to be honest. Um, as far as I'm concerned, this is the only ignition kit of this type that allows you to do this. So take advantage of it. It's very simple and it's very easy to do. Another point that I really wanted to discuss is primary covers. In the instructions on Electric World and also on their website, they talk about primary covers interfering with the rotor itself. Now, if you have some of the different electric rule that does not have the coils itself, you're probably not gonna run into that problem because their rotors are much different, more like the original Lucas rotors, and they're much narrower. So you probably won't have any problem with that. But if you're using this lighting setup with the uh, stator coils and this type of rotor, you might run into problems interfering. I haven't heard of running into problems myself or with my customers on the twin cylinders. So Triumph, twins, A65, things of that sort, because their covers are usually larger internally, which, I, you know, which, which already has room um, for your rotor to clear. However, some that have unit singles, B25s, B44s, B40s, things of that sort, it's a little bit more compact and it's a little bit more crowded. And again, Electric World does talk about this and they describe that you might have to basically clearance, which would filing or dremeling your, your primary cover. Now, I don't want to scare you about it. It's one of those type of ordeals where you'll find out as you go. It's not very common, but if that's something that you're running into, you definitely want to be able to have the tooling and the mindset uh, to address it properly. If you're changing the thickness of the spacer, again, that we talked about early, if it's thicker, it's gonna be further away. If it's too thin, it's gonna be it's gonna be pushed in more. So it's very important to take all that in and understand why everything works hand in hand when you start working with spacers. All right, you guys, we're getting uh, close to the end of the video and also my battery is getting a little on my camera. So let me go ahead and do a quick recap of how to install the electric twirl. So first, what you're gonna do, as we discussed earlier, assuming that you already know what your spacer thickness is, put your spacer on the end of the crank, tapered collet, remember how the, which way the taper goes, the high end to the back of this, slide it on, take your stator, identify the red mark and where you want it. Obviously, you wanna make sure that your wires are not gonna be in the way, so we'll just use this for now. Go ahead and slide it on. Make sure it's in the center. So you have maximum throw both ways. You notice here that if you put your nut on, there's a shoulder. So there's three aluminum spacers here. Slide these spacers on, reuse your lock nuts, torque it down. I think depending on the thread pitch and diameter, I believe it's like 10 or 15 pounds. So refer to your manual on that. So after that, this is on here. You can go ahead and tighten this down. Find top dead center. Know where you want your crank to fire at. So let's say it's 38 degrees. So everything's ready to go, true top dead center. Get your 38 mark, make sure it lines up with the red. Go ahead and put this on, tighten everything down, and that right there is your crankshaft and your ignition is time. It's literally as simple as that. There's really nothing else to it. 
just make sure, again, and I really stress it out to you, make sure you get the spacing right on this. If you don't get the spacing right, this plate literally could crack. If it's too far in, as you're torquing it down, it's putting more and more pressure on the inside of that boss and it will break. And if it breaks, obviously you'll have to buy another stator plate because we're not gonna warranty that. So make sure you have the spacing right. Take your time on it. If you're turning the engine and it feels a little rough and it doesn't feel smooth um, prior to putting this on, chances are you're having some issues. And take a look at the parts. If there's any rubbings here, any high or low spots, you'll be able to see that um, before you proceed. So again, out of the entire assembly itself, it's very simple. Just focus on the spacing, making sure that this is not binding, making sure you have everything time, make sure your wires are not interfering with the chain, and you should be able to have a great and a variable, and a, excuse me, a very reliable system uh, that Electric World can provide to you. So I appreciate you guys watching this video. Thank you so much for, um, for, for subscribing and, and being a very loyal follower and customer. I really do appreciate everything you guys um, have done for me in the past six years that since Classic British Spares has been on. Again, I really appreciate it. Um, Electric World Ignitions, we are a dealer and distributor for Electric World Ignitions here in California. So if you're looking for a different type of ignition, feel free to reach out to us and we would love to help you out. If you bought a kit not from us and you have a question, call me or email me. I'd love to help you out. I really care about everybody and I want to make sure that everybody can enjoy their vintage British motorcycle. So again, it's classicbritishspares.com. You'll find our full range of electric world electronic ignitions on our website. Thank you so much for watching. You guys have a wonderful day.